While there are clear and unmistakable differences between religions such as Christianity and Islam on the one hand and antinatalism on the other hand, I do think there is a common thread that links such religions to each other, in that what I think these religions are focused on is a devaluation of verifiable physical existence in favor of something imaginary and unreal. In the case of Christianity, of course, we have the imaginary being that is being worshipped, the thing that they call God, and the notion that this physical life that we are experiencing today, while we are alive, needs to be devalued, devalued in favor of a supposed better existence after death, when one has actually ceased to be, in a paradise in which things will be lovely and there will be no more pain and suffering. And antinatalism is suffering from a similar problem, when it is focusing on suffering and it is identifying this as a bad thing, which in itself is not an unreasonable thing to do, although if you want to see somebody very eloquently explain why suffering can have a useful purpose and it can be a desirable thing, then I would suggest you might watch a few videos by Greatex, but that aside, by and large, we can all agree that suffering is something that is best avoided, but the antinatalist position is to respond to that by deeming it desirable to remove suffering from reality altogether. And of course the problem here is that if you're alive, you are going to experience some suffering and the end result is that the antinatalist arrives at the conclusion that therefore it would be best to remove life from the equation altogether. In other words, the best way to remove suffering is to remove life from reality. And of course that is equally absurd in the sense that there may not be a mythical paradise to look forward to in the antinatalist position, but on the other hand it is still clearly not understood by the antinatalist that the removal of suffering in fact leads to nothing, nihilism, non-existence, and therefore, there is no benefit to be had from removing suffering in that way. Removing suffering by removing life from the equation solves literally nothing. The alternative way of looking at reality is accepting reality, accepting our phys physical existence as the only thing that is in fact verifiable by ourselves, that we can be sure is real, and then, if we are to look at how imperfect life can be and how we may be subjected to suffering and whatever else, whatever other unpleasant experiences during life, that it may be our responsibility to try and make life better, to try and improve life. And to looking at it that way, rather than looking at it from the perspective of suffering needs to be removed, leads to a very difficult, different type of conclusion, one in which life itself is not devalued, in which physical existence is not considered to be of a lower class than whatever else may be out there, whether it's a fantasy paradise or nothingness, whatever the hell that is supposed to be. So therein lies, I think, the common thread between these types of religious outlooks on life. It is a unnecessary focusing on the attempt to remove suffering from the equation, leading to the conclusion that therefore life itself is not worth living. And that is truly absurd. <laughs>